Welcome back to Fast Money. Wilshire Lane Capital is an early stage venture capital firm focused on real estate and technology. It recently completed its first generative AI deal with Colleen AI, a platform that helps property managers with the rent and debt collection process. For more on that deal and the future of AI in real estate, let's bring in founder and managing partner Adam Demu Demuyakor. I knew I was going to get that messed up, Adam. Apologies. <laughs> Great to have you with us. Okay. No, great to be here, Melissa. Yeah, this is not uh, it, not an industry that you necessarily think of as being sort of a, a you know place where AI will be employed, but it makes a lot of sense. There are a lot of sort of just repetitive, monotonous processes that could probably be streamlined and maybe even wholly replaced by AI. Can you wa walk us through this deal? Yeah, absolutely. So when you think about uh, technology as it pertains to real estate, historically, real estate has been a technological lagger, right? So logistics, um, you know, telecommunications, those are front runners when it comes to technology, but real estate's usually behind. And it's been the case with AI as well. So obviously, with the advent of AI, with open AI is coming out with its chat GPT models, you've seen it impacting media entertainment, logistics, transportation. But we haven't really seen it impact real estate so much. But over the past few months, you're now seeing more of those use cases. And so, as you mentioned, uh, there are so many monotonous, you know, rudimentary manual processes that I don't think that people realize that are happening on the back end of real estate, right? So you're looking at anything from leasing to property management to maintenance and capex uh, collections. These are done by people, uh, and they're typically lower level tasks. And now that we have generative AI models. You're able to automate a lot of these processes. And so, as you mentioned, Colleen AI, our most recent deal, is actually a company that does exactly that for the collections process. Uh, it uses large language models to generate optimal responses and outcomes in order to be able to communicate with the tenant and remind them such that they can you know, pay their rent on time. So we're very are, excited about that one. Are there sub-industries that will be completely replaced by this? I think, you know, we like to look at it as an augmentation of the existing industry. So I think that, you know, you have back offices of property management companies where you have people that are, you know, filing paperwork, uh, doing, you know, manual inputs for leasing, uh, handling these processes on, on collections and maintenance. And so, you know, the people who are doing this work, uh, there's better things that they could be doing, right? When you think about real estate, property management tenants, there's higher value, uh, higher value engagement that can occur. It doesn't have to be so transactional. And so I think that if you have automation from AI that flows into this, you actually can allow these people to move into higher engagement with their tenants and turn into a win-win scenario for the industry. Adam, it's Tim. Thanks for joining us. You've talked a little bit in your, I was reading your notes about the repurposing of some of these office buildings for other things, like data center. Uh, I'm just curious your thought on that. You also talk about, uh, at some point, the debt component is for an industry that's worth 30 to 50 percent less than it was. I mean, do you, have to, to start, I mean, is, do you think that's where this industry could be in a couple of years? Obviously, not all properties, but... Yeah, when you look at office, right, it's been it's really been, you know, uh, shocking, right? The level of change that's occurred over the course of the pandemic initially was because of the pandemic. But now you have the stickiness of this hybrid work from home model, right? I think you're seeing a lot of companies that are determining that it's not enough just to have your workforces working completely remotely. But at the same time, there's difficulty in getting people in the office five days a week, particularly when you have unemployment rates this low. And so as a result, you know, you're seeing a lot of estimates. For example, McKinsey has the steady state occupancy of, of office getting to 30 percent below pre-pandemic levels. And so that represents about $800 billion of value destruction in the office space. And so, you know, we have these big assets, these big, big buildings here. The question becomes, how can we repurpose them to their higher and best use? And so, for example, we actually have a company uh, called Stuff Storage that goes into the basement spaces of office or underutilized spaces and converts it into self-storage facilities and operates it on the behalf of landlords. Uh, and we think that you're going to see this in a, in a whole slew of other repurposing, right? Obviously, multifamily, you can convert some offices to apartments. You can repurpose into self-storage data centers, as you mentioned, uh, logistics. And so I think over the next, we'll call it five years or so, you're going to see more of that repurposing and, and how technology can be a part of that.